Gentlemen, we have called you together to inform you that we are going to overthrow the United States government. You still think that jet fuel brought down the World Trade Center? Does anybody else see a problem here? I'm Cobra Commander, and I say don't listen to Alex Jones. What we need is a global government headed up by Cobra with a global Cobra currency brought to you by my friends at Goldman Sachs. So, Cobra! All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are live. Thank you so much for joining us today. I've got to just briefly comment on the Jesse Ventura David Icke uh, controversy that's going on. And I read this last night, and I want to read it again because I had a highlighted copy or a marked copy uh, at home on the points I wanted to make, and I forgot it. So I'm going to have to reread this during a break to, to make my points about these two men uh, and, 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 and hopefully stop them from getting into a, uh, a war with each other that is only destructive for those of us that are investigating liberty and freedom. I think both men are good people. In fact, I know both men are good people, even though I may disagree with both of them on some issues. And it was a comedy of, of error that caused this. Because I can read Ike's article and see how he thought he was seeing one thing, and really it was another. Because, well, I'm going to have a message to David Ike especially coming up. Okay, so coming up later uh, in the hour. Because I could call David up on the phone uh, and uh, tell him this, but I, I think it's just better. I think it's just better to address Ventura and David Icke together at the same time on air because uh, they got into a big argument and there was a big, big, big fracas. And uh, I can tell you that the, the Ventura camp did not intend this to happen. Is not happy. They called me last night. And uh, they've already interviewed Ike two seasons ago and it was very positive. And I have been embroiled in the middle of this. I'm in this article, so I don't normally get into this stuff. But these two guys are, you know, towers of alternative thought. And for whatever reason, they've they've garnered the attention. See, and, and, and so we can't have them fighting with each other. Just like I said some bad things about David Icke 12 years ago because I was asked about it. I said he was a turd in a punch bowl. And see, I'm already covering this now. I'm going to comment on it later. And the point is, that was destructive. And so I apologize for it. David is welcome to his opinion. And he is a very intelligent person. And, I mean, all these religions out there believe things wackier than what he does. And so that was wrong. Because so much of what he does, I know, is documented. And he's very well-spoken, very charismatic. And has woken a lot of people up. A lot of the fruits of David Icke are very, very positive. And I've talked to him, uh, you know, I've um, a lot. And I, I, I think he's a good guy. Same thing with Ventura. And now these two are in a big fight with each other. So I will, I'll comment at the bottom of the hour. It's pretty soon I'll have time to read the article again. Because I had all these points I wanted to make. I wanted to address each area. And uh, so in the next two breaks, I'll have time to read this. It's titled Jesse Ventura, Pet Detective. <laughs> I must read. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reread over that and uh, comment on it. And again, normally I don't get into infighting and stuff like that, but these guys are both really, you know, big icons and alternative thought, and it's just destructive to have them fighting. And then their supporters and admirers and uh, people fighting with each other. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna address it because it's it's educational on other fronts, and it's important to to try to get these guys to make up and be friends. I think. Okay, now continuing uh, here, I want to talk. I want to speak now directly to Jesse Ventura and David Icke. And sure, I can call both men up on the phone and talk to them, but I, I want to basically talk to both of them here at one time and give them my two cents, and they can listen to it or they can ignore it. But uh, David Icke put out a report yesterday that I didn't see till last night, and it's caused quite a fracas. Jesse Ventura, Pet Detective, a must-read. And it's up at uh, davidike.com. And so here's my message to both of them. <sighs> David, you know that they interviewed you for the first season of Conspiracy Theory on Secret Societies. It was the first time there was ever a national TV show that was anti-Skull and Bones, Bohemian Grove, Illuminati. And you were interviewed and 
and presented as an expert with gravitas. You were treated with respect. That piece is public. I'm sure you've seen it. So let me just bring that in as evidence, number one. Number two, you are both good people that I know, and even if I disagree with some of what both of you believe, it doesn't mean that we're enemies. It doesn't mean that we can't all have our views. Many of David Icke's views, he's insightful, he's charismatic, he's very intelligent. So a lot of what he's talked about has come true. He talks about some really wild stuff, but truth is stranger than fiction. I'm not saying I'm sold on some of it, but... A lot of what he covers is mirrored in, in religions of the world and history. He just has a different interpretation of it. And it's a lot less wacky than what some other religions push. So my question is, why do people get so upset about what David Icke covers? Okay? Now, on the subject of Ventura, people are asking, well, Alex, what are you talking about? Um, and I'm, I'm, I've been embroiled in this. I've been mentioned in this several times. And, 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 and so I'm going to cover it here briefly and then go to our Jim Rogers uh, interview, um, at least parts of it, ahead of our guests joining us. The interview I did last night that we're premiering here on the radio today, and uh, also we'll stream it at prisonplanet.tv. There aren't many people in the world that are prominent, who will cover hard subjects, and who will delve into things with an open mind. There aren't many people who have... A large followings that are well-known and who can reach a giant audience anytime they want. Jesse Ventura can do it. I can do it. David, I can do it. Who else is there at that level? And I was responsible partially for waking Ventura up six years ago and giving him information and material. His son Tyrell had already primed the pump. But I was instrumental in bringing Ventura completely over to a full awakening to the fact that this is a big lie. Doesn't mean Ventura has all the answers, or I do, or Ike does. And I know that he is a good guy who's waking up and learning a lot and has a really good chance to even wake up more and reach tens of millions of people. And so we can't have David Ike and Jesse Ventura fighting with each other because of a comedy of errors. And that's my message, and then I'm just going to finish up briefly here, to Jesse Ventura and to David Ike. This is a comedy of errors. I have been on probably 15 shoots with Jesse Ventura in the last two seasons in this season of Conspiracy Theory. When they're out in the field and we're at some government facility or something, it's live, it's 100% real, it's, it's happening. But when you sit down to do an interview, sometimes the camera guys and lighting guys will take two hours to get ready. I've been there many times with Ventura's like, come on, let's get this done. And then he'll just kind of rant and rave about the new world order and police state and stuff <clears throat> and issues. I mean, he, he's a real person. He's really passionate behind the scenes about these issues. He'll talk to a waiter. He'll talk to troops at the, at the, um, at the airport. He will sit there and talk at people. And so what happened is Ventura rode the train for a day to get there, uh, to meet in Cleveland, Ohio with David Icke, where he was speaking and in, in, in reality TV, they do not want the people that are about to meet to meet beforehand because they want it to be real. And so Ventura gets down there, and he's in one room, and right next to it's Ike. They're keeping him apart. He hears Ventura for an hour talking about issues. Ike is feeling like, Ike says, well, I'd like to go in and meet him. Ike's a nice guy. He's like, I'd like to go meet him. You know, and they're like, no, 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 no. You can't meet with him now because it's just some, you know, mid-level or low-level you know, uh, uh, person who's keeping the schedule. You know, you, and, and that's what he says in the articles, like, no, 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 sorry, not right now. Didn't tell him why. So he sits there for over an hour, hearing Ventura right in the next room, you know, basically saying, hurry it up, and ah, this new world order, and, you know, ranting about issues. And then Ventura comes in, and they sit down and they start doing the interview, and Ventura's like, give me bullet points, boil it down. And, 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 and Ike's like, come to my nine-hour thing. And Ventura's like, I can't. I got to get back on my, you know, train. And uh, Ike's, well, then why? And, and, and then Ventura, and it's all described here, is like, come on. You know, tell me, you know, when did you see a lizard person? 
and Ike wants to get all into history and Sumerian texts and Garden of Eden and all this stuff, and that it's interdimensional or spiritual or whatever. And there's basically like a blow up is basically what he says, and he just got up and left. Now, I get a call last night from the Ventura camp. I'll just leave it at that. And, and they were upset, and they weren't even asking me to call Ike for them or what they should do. They were just telling me, have you heard about this? And I said, no, I haven't heard about it. And, they, and so I pulled up the article and read it, and I said, well, what I think you ought to do and I, and I, is contact David Ike, because there's not many people at this level trying to wake folks up. We don't need people fighting with each other. I said, I, you know, called him turd in a punch bowl 12 years ago. It was wrong. I apologized for it. <clears throat> we need to maybe do a Skype interview since he's gone back to England where, you know, we could say, we decided to, you know, try one more time with Ike and then let Ike somehow boil it down for him. Because, you know, Ike will end up being in the TV show like three, four minutes. So that's why they were like, you know, give it to us quick here. Crystallize it. And Ike's like, no, I'm not going to do that. Now, speaking to David Ike, reading his article, he's like, first, the arrogant one, Ventura, sits there for an hour making me wait, uh, bla you know, blabbering. Uh, well, no, that's because Ventura is so real. He, you know, he's in there talking about the New World Order. Then, uh, you know, Braverman wanted me to sign the release form first because this was obviously a setup. And I could see how it looked like a setup. No, they always want people to sign a release form in case something happens in the interview. And Ventura is going to ask hard questions. But that's just standard for TV. And, and, and David Ike was a national TV host. He, he knows that. But I can understand how this all looks. And then he also, the one thing Ike does that isn't fair, and, and I understand David was upset, so I'm not attacking him. I've said things that I think are a little bit, you know, off color. He says, oh, they keep mentioning, you know, on TV how he was a Navy SEAL. Well, sorry, you know, don't Navy SEALs kill people? I don't think that's good. I'm not into killing people. Well, by the way, Jesse's anti-war and, 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 and anti-offensive war, so he's not into killing people either. Basically, I know Ventura. Sometimes he gets in, in kind of a grumpy mood. I'm, I'm sure that's what was going on. Ike had been super ill, so ill he almost didn't do the interview with us. And he still did the interview the day before, did the interview with them. And both guys aren't going to be pushed around, and they just clashed. Two tough guys. Because, you know, Ike back in his day was a tough guy and champion soccer player. And, you know, I've read about him and stuff. He, he's not a wimp. And so, so the whole th deal is you get two tough guys together. They start arguing. Ike thinks it's a setup. It blows up. But Ike, and I mentioned here, he says, well, Alex said it was going to be a nice, friendly piece. And I'm sure Alex meant well and is correct. Uh, you know, he says, I have no doubt that Alex believed what he said to be true. But the problem was, you know, something else happened. David, you were on their show two years ago, and it was totally positive. What's happened here, David, is that Ventura is nervous covering these subjects, but he's covered all the hardcore things that can be proven. People want to hear this covered. And so this season, some of their episodes are subjects that Ventura uh, isn't uh, you know, entirely comfortable with. So he's going to put you on the hot seat. And, you're, and I always see David shine on the hot seat on international television and things. So David was sick. Ventura was in a grumpy mood. You guys need to get back on the phone, be friends, and not have this piece come out with the blow up and all this just because it makes interesting TV. It, it needs to, you guys need to be friends and agree to disagree and not let this happen so that all of your supporters on both sides start fighting with each other over this. Let's not divide and conquer here. I understand David's issue. We all need to be friends. That's what I have to say.